Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're looking at a camera that is uh, some kind of fixed camera, but we have some room to actually move our player around. Let's give it a look. So as you can see, I can move around without moving the camera, but as soon as I pass a certain distance, which is my bound X, you're going to see that we move with the camera. We always have that little square where we're allowed to move without moving the camera, and this is what we're going to be learning today. Okay, so the video is composed in two sections. The first one is a very short theory section. You can watch that to understand a little bit better. And if you'd like to just implement this camera without really understanding it, uh, not that it's very hard to understand, you can skip at uh, the mid part of this video. So guys, without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, before jumping into theory, I'd like to first apologize for this setup and also this kind of video. I know my voice doesn't sound as clear and that's because I have a whole different thing going on here. I'm currently not at my place, I'm on the fly in a motel recording this, so sorry about that, my drawing is going to be the same though, I suck at this and that's just, uh, that, that's just how it is. Let's jump right into theory. So basically what we're trying to achieve today is to have our little player, which is going to be denoted as a circle right now, just move around the map left and right and wherever he wants to go and uh, have a camera follow him. So that's pretty simple, you could actually just put a camera uh, and just just tell him to be a children of the player so when the player moves around the camera would also follow the same exact path but that's a little bit boring everybody does that and uh, it's just it doesn't look good because you're just snapped to the player sometimes you want to give a little bit of room on the left on the right maybe the player is allowed to move just a little bit before the camera even does anything so for a move that I just drew, it's like, like a very very slight move like this, we would not have the camera do the exact same, we would have the camera just stand still, and if it goes beyond a point, which is something we're going to call bound X and bound Y in the code, so if it goes beyond that, then at this point, we can start taking the exact same movement and applying it to the camera. So we're giving a little bit of room for our player to just walk around. Now the way we're going to be doing this is quite simple. So let's assume we have our player object, which is the, the circle we mentioned. And right now, let's assume he's at zero. I know that's really confusing, but he's at zero in X. We're only gonna be doing an example using the X axis for now, so left and right. And now we also have the camera, which is denoted by this bigger square right here. So this would be the camera. And that camera has a center as well, so the center of that camera, if you just make up all the points, would be right where the player is if I knew how to draw properly. So it's like right in the center over here. We can also say that the camera center is at 0x. Now if we move our player just a little bit, so if we say, well, the player, instead of being right in the middle, he's going to be here. So 0 now becomes 1. At this point, the center of the camera is still zero, and that's the information we'll be using. So we'll be using the center of the camera as information and also the center of the player. Our formula is going to be quite simple. We're going to say if the distance in between these two, so we're going to do a distance, if the distance in between the player and the camera center, so distance in between here and there, if that is bigger, then a certain amount will define, and that amount is what this square represents here. So, and let's just say that this point over here would be 2 in x, so that would be 2 in x. If the distance in between the player and the camera center is bigger than 2x, if that is bigger, then we're going to go ahead and move the camera as well this way. And we'll see that shortly as we implement it directly in the code. All right, so now let's move on to the implementation phase. And this one's gonna be quite, quite easy. It's not a long script. It's gonna be, um, you know, fairly, fairly short. And here is the scene I have. So I have a scene, I have a little guy that moves around left and right. This is taken from my course. So uh, we build a game like this, a small top-down RPG. If you're interested, you can always have a look on the channel. It should be somewhere there in the description. Anyway, um, we have this scene just running around. And what we're going to do is create a camera that is hooked up to this player and now when we move around the camera is going to follow him around but of course within the bounds that we define so let's go right away we have created a camera motor script already so if you have not a camera motor script just go ahead and right click create a new c sharp script and put it on your camera i will be opening up the camera motor in mono developed now i would rather use visual studio but as many of you have i've already experienced 
Um, now is not really the best time to use Visual Studio. For some reason, it does not do IntelliSense. It's something that Unity has already addressed in their forum. They know it's an issue, and hopefully, we can actually use Visual Studio again uh, quite soon. So, let's go ahead and implement this thing. We said that we require a lookat. So, we're going to create a public transform that I'll call lookat. Of course, this is going to be my player for now. Now, um, next thing I'll need is to define how bigs are to bounce. So, how big is that square uh, in which the player is allowed to move without moving the camera? So, I'll put that on public again. I'll have a public float bound x that we can set on maybe something like 1.2. Uh, my game is very, very small on a small scale. So, those are actually quite big numbers for me. And bound wise, I'll put that on 1.5. Know that these ones are on public simply so we can modify them within the inspector. Okay, next up, the late update. We require a late update, not a regular update. If we move our player first and then we move the camera, everything is fine. But if it's the other way around where you move the camera first and then the player update its movement, we might see a small glitch and it's not going to be good. So make sure you are using the late update. Inside of our update, every single frame, we're going to create a vector tree that I'll call delta. So this is going to keep track of the difference in between our current place or our current transform the position and the newest one where we should be. Delta is going to be the difference in between the two. All right, so now we're going to start doing our checks. Are we within the bounds of, say, one axis at a time? So we'll be checking x axis first and then move on to the y axis. We will start by declaring a float called dx that's going to be standing for delta x and we'll be taking the current position of our lookat dot x minus the camera transform. In this case, camera is us, so we can say transform the position dot x. And now we will check if dx, so if our delta x is bigger than bounds x or, so we'll do the or operator over here that I can't seem to do on my laptop for some reason. Amazing. Okay, here it is. So, or dx is smaller than minus bound x. And this is how we checked uh, whether or not we are inside of those bounds. Now, um, if we are, we're going to do one more check. So we're going to check, are we on the left side or on the right side of this square? So if transform dot position dot x is smaller than the look at dot position dot x, it would mean that we are on the right side. Transform the position that X is the camera and this one is on the left while the player, so look at, is on the right. Now assuming that is the case, we'll take our vector at the top here, we'll say delta dot X is equal to DX minus the bound X. And here we go, so we got our very first check. We need a else statement in here in case we are on the left hand side. And please bring back Visual Studio. I'm getting tired of this. <laughs> um, so same thing here, delta dot x is equal to dx plus bounds. In this case, we don't do a minus bounds, we do a plus bounds. All right, so having all of this done, this is only for the x-axis, not right here. We will copy this over and do the same exact for the y-axis. So dy in this case, and we're looking at the position y, transform that position y. Um, just go ahead and change these. You know what to do. All right, so we should be done. Make sure you go ahead and just change everything, including the dx to dy. And now having both of these done, we're going to go at the very end and finally move our camera. So move the camera. We will do a transform dot position. You can do plus equal delta, or we could do, you know, equal transform dot position and so on. I'm going to do this option because we will implement smoothing just after that. All right, so let's give this a try within the engine. I have my main camera. When everything is done, we should be able to see the fields pop on the right hand side. So we have the bound X, we have the bound Y, and we're going to put our player in the look at. If we press on the play now and we move around, we should see the camera doesn't move until you actually reach a really far point. I, I don't think that I actually reached that point because my game is so small. So let's go back in the middle, put the bound X on say 0.5. Oops. 
And as you can see, I only start moving once I'm past a certain point within my screen. And here we go. So we have everything working. Let's give this a better try with real values. So I would assume um, 0 0.4 and maybe 0 0.2 in Y. Note that I do have a very small scale in this game. So I can move within this nice little floor patch here. And if I decide to go out, it starts following my player around. And that's how we created this type of camera. Now what I will be doing is going back in this code and add some smoothing feature to it. Smoothing is fairly simple. We've done it many, many times in the past, but we'll do it once more for the sake of this camera. I'll go at the top, implement a private vector tree called desired position. And what I will be doing is I'll actually store desired position here instead. So we're not going to be modifying directly the transform that position anymore. We'll do desired position is equal to this. And then we will do transform that position is equal to a vector three dot lerp. We will lerp in between our current position and also the desired position for a value called speed, which is something we don't have yet. So let's go ahead and at the top, I'll do a public float speed and we can make that equal, say, 0 0.15. It has to be value in between 0 and 1, simply because we're using it in a lerp. And uh, if you put it on 1, it really isn't going to do much. So it's always going to take the value on the right-hand side. And if you put it on 0, it's always going to take the value on the left-hand side. So somewhere in between 0 0.05 and 0 0.2 is what I like the most for these type of cameras. So let's move around and see that Nice little smooth follow we have. Pretty cool. All right, guys, so that will be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you didn't mind the uh, quality of the voice or all that kind of stuff. I'm still in the process of being in a motel in Vietnam all day, so um, I'm trying to make videos as I can. I will come back to a more a regular schedule really, really soon once I'm done here with work. Thank you so much for watching again. Join the Discord. Subscribe to the channel and uh, send us your love and your hopes and dreams and such. Okay, I will catch you in the next one.